Not too long ago, Singapore launched this huge, ambitious goal for its food security. It was called 30 by 30, a massive plan for the future. And then, almost out of nowhere, it was gone. So today, we're gonna figure out what on earth happened. Now, to get a sense of just how bold this plan was, you have to understand this one incredible fact. Singapore imports a whopping 90% of its food, 90%. And yet somehow, it's always ranked as one of the most food secure places on the planet. The secret? They buy their food from over 170 different countries. It's all about diversification. So that's the big question, right? If their import strategy works so incredibly well, why even bother with a massive plan to grow more food at home? And more to the point, why did the government suddenly scrap its own signature 30 by 30 goal? Well, that's the mystery we're gonna solve. Okay, to really get what went wrong with this new plan, we've gotta rewind a bit. We need to see how Singapore became so dependent on imported food in the first place. And wow, the change was fast. I mean, back in 1965, when Singapore became independent, almost a quarter of its land was used for farming. But as the country boomed, that land became way too valuable for apartments and factories. So by 1984, the government made a huge call, phase out the old farms. And today, less than 1% of the island is farmland. Just incredible. And you know, this quote, it really hits home. It shows you the real people behind that policy change. Imagine being told by the government to invest in your farm, you do it, and then they pull the rug out from under you. It sent a super clear message. Singapore's future was all about global trade, not growing its own stuff. But fast forward a few decades, and you see that pendulum start to swing back. By 2019, with a whole new set of global worries on the horizon, Singapore rolled out a pretty radical new vision, the 30 by 30 goal. So 30 by 30 was basically Singapore looking at the world and getting nervous. You know, they saw climate change messing with crops. They saw how fragile global supply chains could be. So they decided they needed a local safety net. The big idea was to produce 30% of their own food by the year 2030. And look, this wasn't some pipe dream. Singapore had done this kind of thing before with their famous water story. They'd managed to become almost completely self-sufficient with water, something nobody thought was possible. So they thought, hey, if we can do it with water, we can probably do it with food. And honestly, on paper, the plan was brilliant. It covered all the bases, turning land into high-tech farm zones, pumping cash into R&D, giving grants to farmers, training people, and even running ad campaigns to get everyone to buy local. I mean, what could possibly go wrong, right? Well, as it turns out, a lot. Right when 30 by 30 was supposed to be taking off, a perfect storm of global crises hit, and it just hammered the plan's biggest weaknesses. First up, the energy crisis. The war in Ukraine made natural gas prices go through the roof. And since Singapore runs almost its entire country, we're talking 95% of its electricity on natural gas, their power costs just exploded. Okay, so why was that such a big deal? Because the whole 30 by 30 idea was built on these high-tech vertical farms. Think of them like data centers, but for plants. They need a ton of power for lights, for climate control, sometimes eight or nine times more electricity than a regular farm. So that price spike, it was absolutely catastrophic for their business model. And then came the second punch, this time from the world of finance. To fight inflation, the U.S. central bank started jacking up interest rates. They went from basically zero to over 5% in what felt like the blink of an eye. And that had a huge knock-on effect. See, these big vertical farms are super expensive to build, so they need tons of money from investors. But when interest rates go up, that free money just disappears. Venture capital for Agritech, it just collapsed. It dropped by 60%. The cash tap was turned off, almost overnight. But here's the thing. These global crises, they didn't really create the problems. They just ripped the bandage off and showed everyone the flaws that were already there, baked right into the 30 by 30 plan from day one. At the end of the day, it was all about the price. It's that simple. Even with government help, the math just didn't work. You could buy imported veggies for, say, two bucks a kilo, but the fancy, locally grown stuff from the vertical farms, we're talking 15, maybe 20 bucks. No amount of buy local marketing can convince the average person to pay eight times more for their salad. And the way the government was trying to help had its own set of problems too. 
The grants were great for building the farms, but they didn't touch the massive ongoing costs like that killer electricity bill. Plus, the government was kind of obsessed with these unproven, super high-tech farms while ignoring cheaper, more reliable methods. And to top it all off, the red tape was just awful. It could take two years just to get a farm approved. So you can guess what happened next. It was a domino effect. Big, shiny projects started to fail. One company had to give its land back because it couldn't even afford to build a farm. Another early startup, one that got a grant, just shut down. Then a huge Dutch company closed its massive farm after less than a year. The dream was literally falling apart in public. Okay, so after all that, where are we now? Well, the 30 by 30 goal is officially dead. But this story isn't over. Singapore learned some really tough lessons from this. And now they're trying again, but this time with a big dose of realism. Their new strategy is way more down to earth. Instead of this one giant vague goal for nutritional needs, they've broken it down. They now have specific targets for specific types of food and they've given themselves more time. The new goal is to produce 20% of their veggies and 30% of their proteins by 2035. It's not as flashy, for sure, but it's a heck of a lot more realistic. And you know, it's really important to say this whole thing wasn't a complete failure. Not at all. The push did lead to some real wins. For example, local egg production actually hit that 30% target. And bean sprouts, they're at 50%. So it's not just a story of failure. It's a story of learning some painful but really valuable lessons about what actually works. And that really brings us to the big final question that this whole saga raises, not just for Singapore, but for any major city. What's the real cost of the food on your plate? Is it just the number on the price tag? Or do we also have to factor in the price of security, the cost of being self-sufficient, and the hard economic truth of trying to grow food in the middle of a concrete jungle?